Today we're talking about a simple mistake that people make when getting into embedded systems that can affect the accuracy of your ADC basically anytime you're working with sensors or just taking measurements. Welcome back. Today we're talking about embedded systems and specifically this video is inspired by something that happened last week in my lab. It's a problem that comes up a lot with embedded systems, especially when you're trying to measure things with microcontrollers. And it can cause beginners a lot of headaches. If you're not familiar with my research, I work on low power systems, mobile computing, sensor networks, and of course embedded systems. I do a lot of work with energy harvesting and batteryless systems with the goal of making those systems faster, more efficient, easier to deploy, and more secure and resilient. But anyway, in the course of one of our projects, we were trying to run a simple experiment to see how different solar panels would react when something happened that obscured the light hitting the panel. Basically, if something moves over the top of a solar panel, we wanted to see how does that respond? How does that affect what's actually coming into the solar panel? And we didn't need super high precision. So what we did is we took a vehicle headlight, we set it up on a table facing a solar panel and a little servo motor that would swing a piece of cardboard over the solar panel like this. And of course, just in case any of you were thinking that scientific research always looks fancy and futuristic like Stark Tower. Never underestimate the scientific value of cardboard and tape. And to gather our measurements, we simply took the voltages coming from the solar panel, used a resistor divider to bring down the voltages because these solar panels can go higher than five volts. And then we connected the divided voltage to an Arduino Uno, so we could just use its ADC to log the voltages. Now, I don't think I've talked about resistor dividers on this channel. If you'd like to see more of that or see that in a future video, please let me know down in the comments. But for now, I really just wanna look at what went wrong with this setup. Because when we got the data back from the Arduino, we expected to see something that would look like this orangish yellowish line here with a nice smooth top and a rather smooth drop whenever the paddle blocks the light. That's what we expected to see. Instead, what we got was this black line. And even on that line, we had a nice clean line right up until we started to think about moving that paddle. And then we got these crazy up spikes right here with lots of noise before it finally dipped. And for someone who's new to this, who's new to microcontrollers and ADCs, you might at this point be thinking, ah, this doesn't make any sense. And actually, to be fair, I'm not new to microcontrollers and this took me a minute to figure out, mostly just to realize what was going on. But it did look weird because, you know, we grab an oscilloscope, we measure it, you know, get a secondary measurement and that looked just fine. So what could the problem be? And the reason that this can be so hard to find is that the problem we're facing actually doesn't have anything to do with the signal we're measuring. The signal we're measuring is just fine. The problem is with the power supply. You see, we're using the Arduino to measure the solar panel output, but we're also using the same Arduino to power the motor that was moving the paddle back and forth. And it sort of worked, but we were putting a fair amount of stress on the Arduino's power supply every time we engage that motor. That's why you see these spikes up at the beginning before the dip actually occurs. The sudden increase in power draw, what it does is it caused our supply voltage to drop a little. Not so much that the Arduino crashed or rebooted or anything like that, but remember from my video on ADCs, check it out if you missed it. But if you remember from that video, I mentioned that ADCs measure relative to a voltage. And in this case, their reference voltage is the supply voltage for the Arduino. So if that supply voltage drops and the thing we're measuring stays the same, then the ADC output is going to increase. And that's what you're seeing here is the voltage drops. So the, these up spikes, these are actually just the voltage, the supply voltage dropping because all of a sudden we have this big surge of power going through the power supply and it can't quite keep the voltage steady, which it would like to, but it can't. So what do you do when this happens? What did we do? Well, in our case, we were in cardboard and tape mode. So all we did, we simply just got a battery. In this case, I think it was actually some kind of power bank, one of those USB power banks. And we used that to supply power to the motor. And that took the stress off the Arduino's power supply, got rid of that voltage drop whenever we engaged the motor. And then we basically had this yellow, this yellowish orange line. We got the data that we needed. Everything looked smooth and we were fine. And of course that was just a quick and dirty hack and it worked for us. But what if you were designing a device that needed to measure things and engage power hungry actuators like motors or things like that, what would you do? Now in that case, really the core of the issue is you got to design a better power supply, a power supply that can maintain stable voltages when you need to measure stuff. Now this might mean using a different voltage regulator, one that can actually handle the currents that you want to provide. 
that might increase costs a bit and it might actually affect your energy efficiency, but that's one way to solve it. A lot of systems also will split their power rails. They'll basically have one power supply for analog measurement stuff and one for digital stuff or one for power hungry stuff and one for everything else. And the idea is to separate these power supplies so that they are somewhat isolated from each other. So if one of them does something crazy like engage a motor, it doesn't affect the other one badly. Often it's done with circuitry tricks using capacitors, ferrite beads, and maybe an inductor, I don't know. The point is there are ways that you can isolate two different power rails from each other and that can make things better. And finally, there have been times in some of the devices that I've designed where I simply just decide not to measure stuff when I know something crazy is going on that's causing a lot of noise on the power line. And that's obviously not gonna work in all applications, but sometimes it might be cheaper or easier than redesigning your power supply. Anyway, I hope this was interesting, helpful. I hope you learned something new. Be sure to like, subscribe, click something on your way out. And until next week, I'll see you later.